good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm one of the endocrine registrars. Today, I'll be discussing a paper on the duration of denosumab treatment and the efficacy of zolindronate to preserve the bone mineral density after its discontinuation, an article which was uh, published last week. So uh, osteoporosis is the most common metabolic bone disorder, which is characterized by a special uh, structural deterioration of the bone tissue and decreased bone mass. Uh, this puts the patient at increased risk of uh, fracture, has a great morbidity uh, effect on the patients, affecting mostly uh, the postmenopausal uh, women. Uh, the, main, the main treatment of osteoporosis are the anti-resorptive therapy, Today, we'll be speaking about two different uh, medications, the denosumab and then the zolindronate, which uh, is from the bisphosphonate family. They have two different mechanisms of action, denosumab uh, being a monoclonal antibody against the uh, rank L um, receptor uh, activate, uh, activator, which is a pathway found in the osteoclastic precursors, which are the cells uh, which are responsible for bone resorption and found in the osteoclast, the mature form of the osteoclast. When this pathway is deactivated, this uh, prevents the precursor's differentiation to the mature forms, and it impairs the function, ending up of the, with an osteoclastic apoptosis and inhibition of the bone resorption. On the other hand, the bisphosphonate, uh, which the zylindronate, uh, which is uh, from our uh, article today, inhibits another pathway within the mature osteoclast uh, that as well ending up as the same, uh, the same effect of inhibiting the bone resorption and turnover, increasing the bone mineral density and reduces the fracture risk for patients. So in the end, they both work on osteoclast, yeah? Yes, okay. yeah, but the, uh, the denosumab has its effect as well that it acts on the precursors as well. The patients who are on anti resorptive therapy for osteoporosis may qualify for a period of drug holiday. This to decrease the long-term risks for a typical septuocanteric fracture, a non-long-term um, risk for the anti resorptive therapy. This practice is associated with some bone mineral density loss and increase in bone turnover. This is not yet really severe or significant when the patient is placed on bisphosphonate. However, this is not the case with denosumab, in which the, uh, the bone mineral density loss is much accelerated if the patient was placed on denosumab uh, therapy. Therefore, the treatment with bisphosphonate is usually used following denosumab, and it's termed as consolidation therapy. We had a lot of studies uh, throughout the years which to tell us what is the efficacy of the anti-resorptive therapy and what's the best regimen to place the patients after genosumab discontinuation. And one of these uh, studies as well will be um, of today's, which is um, a, st a, a study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, uh, focusing on the duration of denosumab and how it does affect the effect of the zylindronate acid, uh, zylindronic acid as a consolidation therapy to preserve the bone uh, mineral density gain, which is taken um, throughout the duration of the denosumab therapy. It was a multi-center prospective cohort study conducted at uh, two Greek and one Dutch bone centers. Uh, they included patients who are treatment naive, ambulatory, postmenopausal women diagnosed with osteoporosis, treated only with denosumab, then received a single zolindronate infusion six months after the last denosumab injection. Uh, they agreed and consent for and gave consent for follow up for twelve months, the duration of the uh, study. They were excluded if they used any other medication affecting the bone metabolism during the last year's name, uh, glucocorticoids. Uh, if they had any bone disease other than postmenopausal osteoporosis, if they had uh, a low uh, creatinine clearance, uh, some renal impairment, or the presence of low vitamin D concentration, uh, as well if malignancy diagnosis uh, it was an exclusion criteria, uh, as well as the presence of liver failure. And how long has it been on the for many years? I am, this is the aim of the study. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so they started with 52 uh, patients. Uh, five of them were excluded throughout um, because of death or new diagnosis of malignancy or uh, one patient as well uh, taking out her consent. So they ended up by uh, 47 patients included in the study. Then they were subdivided into the two groups. Uh, 27 women uh, received the six denosumab injections or less. Uh, and 20 patients received uh, more than six denosumab injections. They were referred throughout the paper as less than six group and more than six group. Uh, we have to remember that denosumab is given as a subcutaneous uh, injection every six months. Yeah, six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, the baseline characteristics of the treatment of the uh, both treatment groups, they were almost the same. Uh, the only difference in between was the changes in, um, it does not show here, but the changes in the BMI. And of course, the number of uh, vertebrae. Yeah. Yeah, just because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the number of the, uh, yeah, in the BMI, there was a bit a change in between the two groups. And of course, the number of the uh, baseline fractures between the two groups, that was significant. They were both treated uh, with denosumab and reached uh, a bone mineral density of osteopenic range. Sorry, they were osteopenic at the start? At the start. Osteopenic. Osteopenic at the start of the study. Okay, we go back. Yes. Yeah. So this is the study design of our of the uh, of the treatment. Uh, basically, the patient uh, at the at the beginning they had no treatment. They were uh, treatment naive. They were subdivided into two groups: more than six and less than six. Uh, denosumab injection. The first group, uh, which had twenty patients, uh, received denosumab. Uh, worth of four years uh, of denosumab. And then the, the second group received denosumab uh, for a period of around two years. They were treated, they were from osteoporosis to a target of osteopenic range. Then this is when, our, when the study started. They had six months after the last denosumab injections, they received uh, a one infusion of uh, zolindronate, five milligram IV. At the baseline, they had their bone mineral density, of course, and then they had their morning fasting bloods for their uh, bone turnover markers, calcium and vitamin D, and repeated uh, bloods at six months and at 12 months uh, of bone turnover markers. And then at the end of the study, um, they had their bone mineral density uh, measured again. Throughout the study, they were having a normal calcium and vitamin D level, and they were in proper replacement. None of the patients received any additional zolindronate uh, throughout the uh, 12 months of the study. Their treatment outcome or the primary end point was to, to measure the difference in the lumbar spine uh, bone mineral density changes between the two groups from the baseline to 12 months. The secondary end points were to measure the difference on the femoral neck bone mineral density changes between the two groups from baseline to 12 months to measure the relationship between the duration of denosumab treatment and the bone mineral density changes at the lumbar spine and femoral neck, to measure if there's a difference in the serum bone turnover markers levels between the two groups throughout the 12 months. They as well added that there was an exploratory endpoint is to see or to measure if there's any incidence of new vertebral fractures or any fragility fractures at the end of study. So moving on to the results, they found that uh, the lumbar spine bone mineral density, our first and only primary endpoint, that they found that patients who received six doses of denosumab or less, they experienced 1% gain in their lumbar spine bone mineral density, and it remained statistically stable in comparison to their baseline. However, patients who received uh, more than six doses of denosumab experienced about 7% drop in their lumbar spine bone mineral density compared to their baseline. So uh, the, the compared to, so this is at the end of the study? At the end of the study, at 12 months. After the lending But After the baseline the, is from the 12 months before? Or from, they were from three years before? The baseline is from when they gave the lending or 
yeah, when they received when they were they were treated from osteoporosis to a target of osteopenic. Once they're in osteo osteopenic range, they were included. After six months of the last denosumab injection, they received their zolid release. From that point, the study started for 12 months. Nice. Yeah. And then in the femoral neck, uh, bone mineral density patients who received six months, uh, six doses, sorry, of uh, denosumab or less, uh, experienced about 1.26 gain in their femoral neck. And patients who received more than six uh, doses experienced 2.56 drop in their femoral neck bone mineral density compared to their baseline. Uh, however, the change was not significant, but it is there and it was mentioned. And this is in the comparison, the absolute values of the uh, bone mineral density between the uh, two groups. So there's no difference there? No, the, there is a difference, it's statistical oh. significance in bit, uh, between the well, first two. I see, yes. I see, okay, thank you. And then uh, the second endpoint, they wanted to measure the correlation of the time of denosumab treatment with the changes in the lumbar spine and femoral neck, they found that the duration of denosumab treatment was negatively correlated with the percentage in the lumbar spine, bone mineral density, with a correlation coefficient of minus point, uh, 0.669. This means that the longer the, the duration of denosumab predicts a larger difference in the, um, in the bone mineral density when the patient is switched from denosumab to zilandronate. The longer the duration, the worse is the uh, like the outcome of the bone mineral density, basically. Moving on to the uh, second, uh, another endpoint, which was the measurement of the uh, bone turnover markers. They used two for bone turnover markers, the CTX and the P1NP. Uh, that they found that the zolindronate infusion was, a fo was followed by a significant increasing trend in the serum bone turnover markers throughout the 12 months in, the, in, the, in both groups. The change between the baseline and six months was not significant in contrast with the changes between six months and 12 months. So more time passes from the last denosumab, the, the more the, the bone turnover markers rise was uh, noticed. Throughout the both groups, and then they found that the changes, in fact, between the two groups was not significant, that in the, in the less than six group, serum CTX rose significantly at 12 months. However, it was only in, for th in three patients, the level were, were found in the above the premenopausal range. And, and um, uh, more than six uh, group CTX changes were not significant in either the six or 12 months. And it was above the upper limit of the premenopausal range for only one patient. However, when they had it in charts, they found that there was a great variability in between the patients in the bone turnover markers. And they noted that there was a great um, trend of the bone turnover markers rising to the premenopausal range, which, which, is, which means basically that the bones are getting less mineralized as time passes. Yeah, this was not significant. Clinically, one patient of the more than six group sustained a clinical vertebral fracture 12 months after the zilindronate. And based on the bone mineral density at 12 months, two patients were classified as having osteoporosis, both in the lumbar spine and femoral neck in the less than six group and two in the more than six group. 23 patients uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of all of the uh, study population developed symptoms of transient acute phase react, uh, reaction following uh, zolindronate, which was symptom, symptomatically treated. No cases of osteonecrosis of the jaw and no cases of uh, atypical uh, femoral fractures. So when they have in the discussion of the paper, they found that women who with, with postmenopausal osteoporosis uh, who became osteopenic with denosumab therapy for up to three years, a single zolindronate uh, infusion given six months after the last denosumab injection maintained the bone mineral density gain at the spine at, uh, and at the hip for one year. However, and women treated for periods longer than three years with denosumab experienced a significant bone mineral density loss. Therefore, the duration of denosumab is an important determinant of the response 
for a follow-up zolidronate as demonstrated by significant negative correlation between the length of the treatment and the changes in the bone mineral density. Then, the, when uh, discussing about their patients, they found that there was um, two, uh, two uh, independent risk factors of bone fragility between the two studied group. They found that the women with the longer denosumab exposure had the lower BMI values and a higher number of prevalent fractures. This suggested that they had a more severe osteoporosis to start with. And that's why they received a longer duration of denosumab. So then they, want, they were talking about that state of the disease. It's an important determinant of the response to denosumab treatment and its discontinuation. Because, the, because denosumab therapy uh, is usually followed by a rapid reversal of its favorable skeletal effect. And in, in profound increase in the bone turnover markers above the pretreatment values. And it's known as the rebound phenomena. It's simply because the denosumab acts on the osteoclast and the osteoclast precursors. We can imagine that a lot of osteoclast precursors were been dormant throughout the, the treatment period, and they will become reactivated immediately after, like, after the denosumab was uh, stopped, basically. And that's why the, uh, the effect of it, it's usually uh, more significant after stopping, and it's associated with increased risk of clinical uh, fractures. And moreover, uh, more severe the disease will require a longer treatment with denosumab, which when stopped will lead to a greater bone mineral density. The paper um, mentioned that as the what's called the mechanostatic reset. It is simply that the bones were weak and they tend to return to the same point of weakness when stopping denosumab therapy. And the concentration of the bone turnover markers have a tremendous drive to return to their pretreatment baseline, even in, with the presence of a potent anti-resorptive therapy like zolindronate is on board as well. And when they explained their bone turnover markers that was not um, like significant, they found that, that the bone turnover markers is having an important significant within subject variability. That's why it's a challenge in the use of it as uh, in, clin in clinical um, setting. And when there's any change in the bone turnover markers, we have as well to interpret it against uh, what was the background of this uh, bone turnover markers and the variability. The second explanation, they said that the number of the city population was a bit small. So this might have masked the overall effect of the bone turnover markers as well. So uh, the limitation of the study is the lack of randomization due to the design, it's a cohort perspective, uh, due design of the analysis. It was two groups are not equal in size, although they had been treated and followed with the same protocol. Uh, there are two other limitations I found that there was no mention of the bone mineral density prior to the start of denosumab. We had to assume that the patient were having a longer duration of denosumab. This means that they had a worse osteoporosis to start with. And uh, another, the, the other, the baseline uh, between the patients, they did not mention about other risk factors, uh, the diabetes, family history, smoking, that was not as well part of the design of the, in the baseline of the patients, which is important. Here, the, the, this is the end of the paper. However, it uh, then referred us to another uh, paper in clinical, uh, in a clinical use. Uh, uh, it's a statement which was by the uh, European um, Classified Tissue Society. I took two, two clinical questions that we have to ask uh, on uh, denosumab. It's usually uh, the first one, which is what, is what to do after denosumab uh, discontinuation. The statement started uh, at the beginning. It says that young patients, uh, with low risk of fractures, basically do not start denosumab as the, as the treatment for osteoporosis. Then denosumab treatment for a shorter duration of time, uh, about 2.5 years or less, and the low fracture risk after stopping denosumab, stop, uh, switch the patient to an oral bisphosphonate for about one to two years, or administer zolindronate for one to two years, depending on the re-evaluation of the bone turnover markers and the bone mineral density. <clears throat> Patients who are treated on denosumab for a longer duration, uh, more than 2.5 years, or, or they have a high risk of fracture, denosumab is, con is considered safe in this population. But you can continue it up to 10 years. However, this has to be an, individual, an individualized uh, decision. And uh, we have to put in mind the, 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 the statement of unplanned 
stop of the or stoppage of the genosimab. Or you, can, you have another option is to switch the patient into zolindronate six months after the last denosimab injection. You have to, we have to measure the bone turnover marker six and three and six months later. Consider a repeated infusion of zolindronate in, in cases of persistently increased bone turnover markers. If this is not available, you can administer uh, zolindronate six and 12 months after the last denosimab injection. And um, if zolindronate was not there, we can give the patient an oral bisphosphonate as well. The second and the last question is what to do uh, in case of vertebral fractures uh, occurring after denosimab. Uh, if the, vert the vertebral fractures occurring within the first one or uh, first or second year after denosimab discontinuation, we have to avoid vertebroplasty or monotherapy of teriparatide. It's another uh, osteoanabolic um, uh, treatment. We can reinitiate denosimab again, or we can treat the patients with IV, IV zolindronate or oral bisphosphonate, or we can com uh, consider the combination of denosimab and uh, teriparatide for two years, follow followed by uh, zolindronate. So uh, in conclusion, it's like the more severe the osteoporosis, that's, uh, that translates to a longer duration of denosimab, significantly affects the efficacy of subsequent zolindronate infusion to maintain bone mineral density gain. Frequent follow-up of the patients treated with denosimab longer than three years is advised, as additional therapeutic intervention may be needed, and there is no uh, protocol or regimen at the moment uh, to serve uh, uh, clinicians on how to treat the patient after the denosimab is stopped. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. That was very worrying. <laughs> In terms of... You're not persuading me to prescribe the nozzle. I think ever, ever. Because the minute you start it, you're in trouble. You're in a trap. And, and we'll just go and back to these guys. The, 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 the last one really good. Uh, this one. We are, we shouldn't. Because once you start, you well, can't stop. Well, what the very <laughs> thing to say? Well, it depends, well. Why can't you, why, why do you, I know what, what's the relative, but we haven't got anyone who was on nothing, have we? I mean. No, all of the patients were on nothing. They're sat, they were started on denosumab. They were all on denosumab, that's what I'm Yeah, saying. that they, they were, all of them were, were uh, studied, well, were what's naive. That, what, if you did, if they weren't on anything? Oste that diagnosed with osteoporosis, started on denosumab. And then. Now, the, going, Peter, the Jeremy, we haven't got uh, Alex. Well, Jeremy, give us some thoughts. Jeremy, help. Well, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because, because if you start, I mean, if you stop the um, denosumab, the bone density falls really quickly. If they're late, even. I think Jeremy's unmuted. But the stopping is because of the concern about the atypical things. But well, that applies to is that the same zolendronate. I don't know if it's the same. The I don't know if it's the same. Whether you need a well, no. I think you definitely. Do, what you don't want is the, a denosumab holiday, which will cause you to rapidly lose bone. So, so that's the so thing. That's what your starting point is: the bone holidays for both. No, the bone holiday is only for this That's because of the risk of a dynamic bone disease, mm. is it? But mm. you know, that's not that risk. I think that's what everybody is. No, is there a risk? I don't is know. There, well, I do know is that you stop the denosumab, denosumab, and yet we're stopping the denosumab. You go to below where it yeah, were but then What's the driver then? That's what I wanted to understand. And then we're saying 10 years, but, and then maybe think about it or not. So really, we're not saying to stop ever. You, or, yes. or is there a risk that I don't, that, that's what I wanted to ask about the age animals or the micro fractures or the... The was considered. Was considered, considered there, is there is, there is, but it's, it's the safety is considered till ten years. The study, the long, the longest uh, duration of patient study on denosumab as a safety was ten years. Okay. No, no, no more than. So if they go, if they stop, well, what do they do after ten years? Because I don't know of any. All the studies that say when you stop it, everything goes pear shaped, and therefore never stop it once it starts. Which to me means I best not start it, and that was one of your recommendations. For yeah. Young people. Hmm. What's wrong with not stopping? Well, so, so when lockdown happens, all those patients' bone density is crap. So we should. But, but they could inject the at home, in theory. It's a subject. That's an advantage. Yeah. That's an advantage. So, so that doesn't have to stop. But mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying, have we got any cases that are worrying? 
atypical. Yeah, we we we've had um that we we do the ten year policy, Karim, and we right. are not stopping it before ten years. So this is an interesting study because, of course, we wouldn't use denosumab if we were only going to use it very short term, simply because of that problem. So we would only be using it in someone where you require it. Normally, people who have fractured or failed on other agents. Yeah. And we'd use it for the full 10 years. And the only piece of good news, Kareem, is that we've got a little bit more time before most of them come to 10 years in order to find out what the hell we're meant to do afterwards. And so this is this Greek group have published reviews and things on this. And, and there isn't really an easy answer because the bone turnover rate is so high, they are getting vertebral fractures. And it's the ones who've already got vert fractures that seem to be at particularly high risk of having a, a, another vertebral fracture a few months after the next denosumab dose would have been due. And um, so that's your, that's our big issue. And so really we're just waiting for data to see which things will change that. Um, Why not just keep going forever then? Well, I think that is an equally valid policy. And uh, the only trouble is that the data from the studies, they did an out to 10 year follow-up as I think someone's mentioned, and we don't have longer term data than 10 years. So um, that's a bit tricky, but I, I would agree with you. I, I you know, what you're saying is entirely true, Emma, because if you're gonna give IV Zol afterwards, well then you are by definition saying you are continuing with the two main nasty side effect risks of avascular, uh, of, of sorry, of osteonecrosis and of atypical fractures. So, um, so why are you, why are you bothering switching over? Yeah. Not just continue. Uh, so that the really is that worse on zolondronate? Are those risks really more quantified than on denosumab? Um, they're not going to be quite um, as if you switch over. If you think about it, the bone turnover markers are taking off. So in fact, you are effectively giving the bone a holiday, yeah. and it, it's having a bit of a party, basically, and waking up with multiple osteoclast um, uh, differentiation. So. Um, so say again, so if you stop the not and switch to the end of mate. So, so straight away the bone wakes up, doesn't it? We know it's that. Not, yeah, it's just simply not holding. And so what we're trying to, what people are trying to work out is, well, is there an agent that will hold it? If you used oral alendronate, would that be a better way of trying to hold it? And the data though shows there is some loss, but not quite as severe in a, as a single dose of IVs. So, so it's a bit of an open question of how you, hang on to what you've got from denosumab. But is there a risk of these funny fractures on the denosumab in the first place? Because if we're then trying to hold on to the bone, then we're trying to, I mean, that, that defeats the object of trying to come off it. So mm -hmm. we either accept the risks or we, I don't understand how we can have our cake and eat it. Yeah, I, I think that's very logical. Um, I'll just quote something from, from a very, very old days when bisphosphonates first came out. There was one called clodronate. And there was a lovely study from Sheffield by McCluskey, which he just put anyone over, the age, over a certain age on clodronate and showed that whilst they were on it, their fracture risk was reduced. But those first generation bisphosphonates had quite a short half-life. And what he showed was that the moment, about a year after they came off, so he treated them for a couple of years, fracture risk went right down, so the, the, the sort of steepness of the gradient for risk. And then, in fact, two years after stopping, they were just straight back on the same fracture risk as they would have always been on, if that makes sense. So yeah. clodronate and the early bisphosphonates, that was what was you knew. You only got protection for as long as you were on treatment. And basically that is what denosumab is. You're mm -hmm. only getting protection as, while you're on treatment. And in fact, the, the, the slight problem is that the steepness of that curve, that gradient is actually even steeper because you get a slight rebound effect. Mm -hmm. So it's even worse. So you are basically gonna very, very rapidly return bone density to normal and be at the same risk as you always would have been um, unless you continue treatment. And yes, if you use IV doll, there will be some reabsorption, but probably you're not going to return to baseline risk. So I, I suppose maybe we shouldn't be totally terrified. Do you see what I mean? You're still going to have a, a reduced risk. It's just not as good as if you'd stayed on denosumab, I imagine. Yeah. 
I don't know whether that's a helpful way of looking at it, but it's just that we've got so used to this fact that this phosphonates stay in the bone for so long and then hang, have this wonderful hangover effect so that you know when you stop them, there's not going to be a trouble. But in truth, that wasn't always the case. And yeah. the other drugs we've ever had, uh, except these long acting phosphonates, stop, you stop them, stop, you lose the effect very quick. What about adding in the terraparatide? That was an option if you've got virtual. You can't do that because that, that unfortunately that increases bone turnover rates. Uh, yeah. uh, so actually, yes. it worsens the, the, the come off effect of denosumab. So that's another trouble with denosumab is that when you're on it, then it's very tricky to switch on to terraparatide. I think you've got to be very careful before you start somewhere. But you think, I mean, we need to sort of counsel them that they'll be on it for 10 years. Yeah. So we have a problem on our end, which is that Paul Holloway, just before he retired, developed a rather a liking for denosumab <laughs> and put lots of quite low risk people onto denosumab. And that's quite common. That's quite common, that, that liking of denosumab. I really love it. Oh, my God. But <laughs> I, I mean, I just think there's yeah, something you ought to think about bone density is what really do you mean by the bone density? And, and, you've closed the remodeling space when you're an anti, on an anti-resorptive. So there's little, little holes that have been dug all over your bone continuously, such that you redo your whole skeleton in 10 years. All those little holes are filled in. So that improves your bone density because all those holes are filled in. But you also increase bone density because you increase the mineralization of older bone, which just becomes hyper-mineralized. And I suppose you're your argument then is, so what are you really meaning when that bone density changes? Yeah. Are you really when you've opened up the remodeling space and so there are lots of nasty holes which will create fractures, uh, which I suspect is actually what's happening, um, or are you just, uh, is it just that actually the mineralization status is changing? Um, because I'm not sure that continued increased mineralization with denosumab over years actually is offering continued benefit, you know, at some point you get a brittleness. It, it, it's not clear that constantly increasing the mineral content of old bone will constantly improve your anti-fracture risk. Yes. That sense. I mean, do we know that what denosumab will do beyond, we, you said we don't know, what do you think will happen if we keep going for 20 years? Uh, Is it going to be the same? I think we'll have a slightly higher incidence of atypical uh, fractures and osteonecrosis yes. uh, on dental procedures. But, um, you know, I think the rates actually have not, have never been that bad. Yeah. You know, historically, we thought they were going to be much worse. I remember bone meetings where everyone was terrified what was going to happen. But actually, the, the rates haven't been that bad. And so perhaps perhaps continued treatment is not going to be such an issue. And I'm hoping that, that they prolong the original trials out further than the 10 year to see if we can get follow on. Yeah. I'm still becoming a bit more nervous starting with new people on Tenotomac, I must say. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I, uh... I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure what Alex's view on this is. I mean, they they are publishing guidelines now and, and things on this, but uh, yes. the truth is, no one has an easy answer. Yeah.